Hai hai hai. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's me again, your science teacher, Teacher Arfifa. Today we are going to continue our lesson on science process skill. What skill that we are going to learn today? Today we are going to learn the science process skill number 11 that is making hypothesis. It is a skill to make a general statement about the relationship between the manipulated variable and responding variable to explain an observation or event. In this skill, we need to identify the manipulated variable and responding variable in an investigation. For example, look at the situation. This is a group of students want to investigate whether what weight of load can stretch a spring longer. So they have a spring and three different weight of load. One kilogram, two kilogram and three kilogram. So one of the students said, I think the spring will stretch longer if the load is heavier. And one of the groups respond, Yes, I agree. The heavier is the load, the longer spring will be stretched. Does the hypothesis accepted? So, we need to carry out an investigation. How do we carry out an investigation? Here we come to the science process skill number 12, that is experimenting. What is experimenting? It is a skill of planning and conducting an investigation to test a hypothesis, collecting and interpreting data until a conclusion can be obtained. So, basically, we can say that experimenting is a skill that apply all the above mentioned 11 science process skill. Do you remember all that? Good. Okay, here I would like to explain the rule of thumb for experimenting. First, you must do a planning, testing the hypothesis, whether the hypothesis is accepted or not. Number three, collecting and interpreting data. Number four, making conclusion and finally you must write a you must write an experiment report let us look one by one what is planning planning an experiment is identifying the problem and making a problem statement for example if we relate to the previous situation how does different weight of load affect the stretch of a spring. This is the problem statement. How does different weight of load affect the stretch of a spring? Next, we have to make the hypothesis. The heavier is the load, the longer spring will be stretched. This is the hypothesis uh, that's supported by the current knowledge or previous knowledge. Next, you must identify the variable. Here we come the controlling variables. What is the constant variables? Of course, type of springs. We must use the same type of spring. Next, ma manipulated variable. Remember what we have in the previous situation? We have three types of load with the different weight. So, our manipulated variables is weight of the load. And lastly, we must have the responding variable. What we are going to observe in this investigation. Yes, we are going to investigate the length of spring that being stretched. So, these are all the three variables that had been identified for this investigation. Next. We must set the aim of investigation. The aim is to relate between the manipulated variable and also responding variable. So, our aim is to investigate the relationship between 
different weight of load and length of the spring being stretched. You can refer to the color code that I use here. What next? Number five, we must list all the needed apparatus and material. So, in this investigation, we need to have one spring, three different weight of load. You can look at the diagram here. Retort stand and also measuring tape. What is the use of the measuring tape? Of course, to measure the length of the spring that being stretched. Next, we must plan the step to conduct an experiment. First, hook a string onto a retort stand. That's why we need retort stand. Hang a kilogram load to the spring. Measure the length of the spring. Here is an quantitative observation. That's, that's why we use a standard tool that is measuring tape. Number four, you must record the measurement. And number five, repeat step two until four using different weight of load. Remember, we have three different weight of load. What next? Here, after we uh, set our planning, next is our testing the hypothesis. Remember, in your planning stage, as uh, in your planning stage, you already identify your hypothesis. So now you you are going to carry out the investigation according to the steps that we plan in the planning stage. Okay, when you carry out the investigation, remember you must record the data, you must collect the data and interpret the data. This is the example of the data collected for each weight of load hang to a spring. This is the length of the spring in centimeter. Weight of the load is manipulated variable while length of the springs is responding variable. So, how can we interpret the data? Yes, from the data, we can say that 3 kg load stretch the spring longest, while 1 kg load stretch the spring shortest. This is our data interpretation. What next? Next, we make conclusion. Here, you have to compare your hypothesis. That is, the heavier is the load, the longer spring will be, spring will be stretched. And look your interpreted data. 3 kg load stretch the spring longest. 1 kg load stretch the spring shortest. Compare this hypothesis and interpreted data. Does they give the same meaning? Does your collected data support your hypothesis? Yes, the hypothesis is accepted. So, you can conclude that the heavier is the load, the longer spring will be stretched. Next is writing a report. How to write a report? This is a simple way to write a report. You must have your aim of investigation, your problem statement, hypothesis, the identified variable, variables, list of apparatus and materials, your steps of experiment, your collected data, your interpret interpretation of the data, and finally, your conclusion. Remember, in conclusion, you must state whether 
the hypothesis is accepted or not. Hooray! You have graduated from Science Process Skill course. Congratulations! Till we meet again in the next topic.